Uh, hi friends, welcome back to my channel. I decided to combine two things that I really love, books and beauty, and um, just figured I would chat with you guys and do a little book review while I get ready for the day. Uh, again, this is my first video doing this and my first time back on YouTube in quite some time. So give me a little grace, but this is the look we're going to be doing here and let's just get right into it. The book I'm going to be discussing today is The Midnight Library by author Matt Haig. Take this off because it's a little hot in here. I always start with my eyebrows since I just think they make me feel naked without it. I start by filling them out just lightly. So The Midnight Library I found this book to be a very easy to read book. It has short chapters and it is just easy to digest. Um, there's not a ton of huge words trying to sound smart. Um, sometimes that's a big turn off for books for me is when like I, be I believe you're smart. You're an author, you know, and so this is just an easy to read, easy to digest book. It starts with Nora Seed, the main character, um, and she has just had a rough go. Um, she is going through a period of kind of hopelessness and despair, and she has decided that life is not really worth living anymore. Um, she doesn't feel that she has anyone who is in her corner. She doesn't actually feel like she has anyone that's in her life at all. I think Matt Haig does a really good job of helping you emphasize and not just necessarily feel sorry for Nora, but actually understand how it feels to be in the ropes of depression or anxiety or mental illness. I haven't really looked it up, but I I'm curious if Matt Haig has experienced any kind of mental illness himself because it seems pretty well written. Next is going to be this palette here. It's got such beautiful bright shades but obviously um, not necessarily something that I would personally wear every day but because this was a Halloween look we are going to use some of these bright pinks. So feeling very um, despaired and as if she has no one in her corner. Um, Nora decides that she is going to take her life and she is going to overdose on her antidepressants. don't want you to think this book is all about despair and sadness because it is not. It is actually about hope and perspective and life itself. Just pressing a um, lighter shimmery shade in here as a kind of base and pressing it in because I want a full pigmented look and I think it helps prevent fallout. Right now I have a little bit of a base on and that's about it. Going in with some hot pink now as my transition shade. So Nora decides that she's going to take her own life um, and as she does so, she is brought to this place called the Midnight Library that has thousands and thousands of lives that are books. And she can choose one book to essentially live in. Once she has determined it is the perfect life, she will completely forget about her old life and just move into this life seamlessly and continue living it. And this is her opportunity for a new life. Now, if you haven't figured it out, these lives are essentially what we would consider to be alternatives to our own lives. This is a line we can draw just about any decision we've ever made or not made. And dear Nora finds her old childhood librarian in this library, and she kind of represents a voice of reason and a soundboard for a lot of Nora's decisions. Nora also, in this library, has a book of regrets. I think we all kind of have a book of regrets, right? She essentially is able to look at her book of regrets whenever she would like. Now I'm just pressing a, another shimmery pink shade into my lid. So she references this book of regrets. She sees all of the decisions she's made in the past that she 
feels would have made her life better. She would not be in the situation that she is in now had she made other decisions. And she lives quite a few lives with this. She gets to pursue all of her hopes and dreams and earn the success and the money and the fame that she does not have in her current life under the assumption that these lives will be, one of them has to be the perfect life and will make her happy. Now, obviously, if you could imagine, this does not happen for Nora. Um, each life she lives, she decides isn't what she thought it would be. It's not giving her the happiness and the joy that she thought it would be giving her. I'm just, again, putting this shimmery light shade. Now, this is not a look for the week. Let me make this clear. I will do more um, looks that are more for your average every day, but I just wanted to start by doing something fun here. You know, in one life, she learns that she thinks that she has killed her cat by being neglectful, and even her cat would leave her, and she finds that um, her cat had an underlying health condition, was going to pass away either way, and the love and affection and care that she has shown her cat actually helped her cat to um, live a, a long and fulfilling life given their circumstances, which I think is a good touch on fate as well. Pressing some shimmery black shadow into my lash line. So in all of this, Nora is learning a lot about perspective and a lot about what really goes into a happy and fulfilling life. And I think there is a good takeaway here for everyone to read into on their own. It helped me think this through. You know, life is never perfect. Uh, this book really helped me to change my thinking a little bit, my outlook on life. And I really appreciated that. And I'm really grateful that I had the opportunity to read this book that perspective is everything in life. You can try on as many hats as you want. If you could go back and change everything and make different decisions, you wouldn't be where you are now. The more you fight what is your fate and the things that are coming your way, the less happiness you have. And that in true happiness is accepting where you are and embracing your current life and your current potential. And if you're constantly caught in the what ifs and that thinking that things will be better, um, you're less likely to have that happiness that you could find. I think evaluating how you see your life and how you see your circumstances is a really important tool to be able to have and to realize that maybe your life's purpose and passion is where you are now and maybe you are just not embracing it the way the universe wants you to. The more we can acknowledge this, the better we all are and the happier we all are. Update, I can't find my lash glue. Um, so we are just going to go with this Huda Beauty double-sided mascara. We're gonna go for the curl and length first and the volume second and call it a day with these lashes because what can you do? Back, back to Miss Norris. I like to think this book has a happy ending. Did I get in my eyes? A little bit. So giving this book a rating, I would give it like a 90 out of 100. I didn't think there was a lot of fluff. There were some plot holes, opinion. There were some things that could have been a little better. But you know what? In the whole scheme of things, I don't think that I would be knocking it that much for it. Just little things to critique for myself. Um, in terms of the rest of my face, I'm just going with some light bronzer uh, just to really accentuate everything, hide the double chin, and... Where's my brush? Turns out I never got the brush. So I'm using this Milk and Honey palette as well. I'm gonna go with this purple shade here just for a little fun highlight in a different color than you're used to. Okay, lip liner and we are done. I'm always trying to talk when I'm doing my lips and it makes no sense at all a lip gloss and I think we're good to go. So yeah, I thought this was a very good book. It made me think, it made me feel, it helped me with understanding some certain things about life and perspective and regrets. Um, also about the people that are there for you. You know, this book really captures the feelings of people in general, but also especially people with mental health burdens right now that feel that they're a burden to others or that they have nobody. Even if that support is there, they don't always necessarily see that. 
And I think this really does a good job of showing that and showing that you do have people. Everyone is able to have resources and help and hope. And I think hope is probably one of the number one things that I took from this book. I would recommend it for really anyone of all reading levels. And again, it was a short, quick, but easy to read book with a whole lot of value that you can learn from it. Especially during stressful seasons and holidays coming up, I think it's just a great book to gain a little bit of insight and perspective on life and what's very, what's really important to you. So this is the end of this video and this is the completion of my look. Um, honestly, <laughs> I think it's kind of wearable, a lot more so than I thought it was when I originally started this video. Um, I'm good to go. I mean, I'm ready to run errands or, I don't know, probably sit on my couch and read a book realistically. <laughs> I really hope that you enjoyed this segment. I would be really interested in doing this again. Let me know the looks below that you'd be interested in seeing and if you have any book recommendations. Um, I'd also be interested in hearing what you guys thought of the Midnight Library. Um, again, I thought this book was near and dear to my heart, but I know there's lots of different perspectives. So let me know if there's anything I missed or anything that you really appreciate or really didn't appreciate about this book. I am all for community, I work from home, and I need people to talk to. So until next time, I'll see you guys soon. Bye. This wasn't supposed to be a live video. I thought I was taking a photo.